I'm John Skinner and this supplements my book Fishing the Bucktail. Okay, I'll be fishing with three quarter and one ounce SNS John Skinner Blackfish Porgy Jigs and they're in the new Crab Guts color. And I'll have links to all of the gear in the description of the video. All right, just getting started. I think I'm anchored okay. A little choppier than I was hoping. I've got a little more anchor line out than usual, so I think I'm going to move around a bit. Should be okay. Anybody home? Is there anybody home? Oh yeah, somebody's home. Nah, I missed them. There's plenty of life. There we go. Oh, come on. How did I miss that fish? Go, action, action, come on, catch a fish. Let's go. Alright, so it took two drops to hook up a nice one. Again, I'm not keeping anything today. He's a short. I just have so much fluke in the freezer, I can't justify killing these guys for a fresh meal when I really, really like fluke fillets and I've got plenty of it. Yeah. Legal limit, 16. This guy's probably 14. But to start... Ah. And I think I'm pretty nicely anchored. It's not too rough. Oh, let's just do this. Get rid of this big guy. Give him some time, probably I'm gonna miss him. This crab is so big it's taking time to get to the bottom. Eating, eating. Keeper-ish. Oh no, that's a keeper. Let's see. Definitely a keeper. Okay, big crab got a keeper. Nicely hooked. This is October 25th um, in 27 feet of water. I don't know the water temperature. My gauge is broken. Um, We've had a lot of windy weather, and even this is not an ideal day to be out in the kayak, but it is what it is. Um, it's 42 degrees out, very cold. Um, I'll say more about that a bit. Oh, what a hit. Wow.
Oh, that's a nice one. Okay, waders in a kayak. Not a brilliant idea. Uh, it's not as bad as it looks. I have a Farmer John 3mm wetsuit on underneath this whole thing. I've got a neoprene surf top. Um, if I end up in the water, which has never happened before, I'm going to be just fine. And uh, especially with an onshore wind, I'm not far from the beach. Everything will be all right. I'll work it out. It's not going to happen. But hey, you know what? That wetsuit gives me uh, a little added security. Not a shorty. Unfortunately, the wind's going to be a pain with the audio, but uh, yeah, Noah, 5 to 10. This is not 5 to 10. Uh, I looked at the buoys. It was gusting up around 15 the whole time I was out, but all right. It, it, I'm, I'm in a safe situation here. a lot of rough weather. Nobody can get out, so I doubt anybody's been fishing this. Thick down there. And you may notice uh, my fish finder was on when I started. It's off now. I, I turn it off once I've stabilized. I, I don't see the point in um, just pinging the bottom with that sonar the whole time. Whether it makes a difference or not, I don't know. Um, I know it doesn't hurt to keep it off. Uh, yeah, and you know the thing is, so what I'm doing is I, I take a couple of shore ranges and it helps me stay confident that I haven't moved off the structure. The truth is, with this spot, it's small. If I move off the structure, the bite's going to stop and, uh, and I know I'll have to reset the anchor. Hey, these are Asian shore crabs. Uh, really easy to hook, just hook them through the bottom, out the top. Small ones, uh, put two, three, even four of them on the hook. Blackfish love them and some tackle shops do carry them. Boy, they're right on it. Ugh. Okay, well, when you no first get hit, you get a bunch of little taps, and uh, I don't do anything with those. I'm waiting for that jig to move away, because that's what's going to happen. These are very light jigs. This is three quarters of an ounce. Uh, three quarters of an ounce with some crab on it. Blackfish picks it up, swims away. You feel that line moving away. He's got it in his mouth. A flick of the wrist is going to hook that fish. I mean, you've got those big lips and uh, razor sharp hook. Um, it's almost hard, I think, to take the jig out of his mouth without getting the hook caught on his lips. I, I think it's that easy. And boy, once you hook those lips, it's it's not fish is not coming off. Okay, and I'm able to use a, such a light jig by using thin line. This is 10 pound test braid. I have a 25 pound test leader. Uh, question I often get, how many jigs do you lose? I will lose none on this trip. Uh, one is about average. And the braid is Daiwa J braid, eight strand, uh, very smooth. So it really re reduces drag in the water. Um, and so far the abrasion resistance is really good up against the structure. So I'm pretty happy with it. Ah. 
like one a trip. I think that's my one. Yeah, and obviously I missed some fish, but losing them, it really is one a trip, and that was the only one I lost. Uh, once you've got that hook in those things, pretty much you're not going to lose them. Fish was just sitting with it. I didn't even know. Yeah, it's a nice one. Okay, the orange jigs. Uh, yeah, you know, at the end of fluke season, there was this huge run on uh, on orange gulp. It, it got pretty silly. Um, I, I don't like gimmicky things. Uh, there actually are good reasons to use this color. One of the things I saw when I did underwater video uh, in 85 feet of water was that this orange really kept its color. I mean, so many other things changed color or bleached out, turned green, whatever. Um, yeah, this really showed up well. And the other thing is, hey, you smash a crab, what color do you have? Yeah, it's something like this. So, uh, uh, you know what? Uh, it certainly isn't the wrong color. These fish are gobbling this up. And certainly, yeah, I'm, I'm sure they would be hitting other colors quite happily this trip. Because um, I'm really one. on them well. But, uh, yep, uh, I'm definitely next trip. I'll be starting with this color again. It's, it's working well. And I do have some confidence in it. Also, when I did some underwater video of blackfish last year, I was really amazed at how curious these fish are and how they come over and check out like anything that, that's unusual. So, uh, yeah, I, I kind of like bright colors to begin with. So uh, I'll keep at it with this and see how this goes. But so far, so good. So it makes a lot of sense to use as light a weight jig as you can possibly use to s just to stay down there. Um, because you want them to pick it up and swim away with it easily and not feel the weight. On the other hand, I find that if I go too light and the current um, is sweeping the jig away, uh, then they become a little harder to hook. So there's that trade-off. You kind of have to um, you know, find the right weight where you're not going to get swept away with the current, um, but you want to make it easy for the fish to pick it up. Okay, it's the biggest one. I keep it off the anchor line. Whoa! Oh. So you need a smooth drag for this kind of fishing because uh, yeah, they take great little runs. Uh, that's a Daiwa Saltus 2500. Loving that reel for this application. It's uh, so smooth and it keeps the water out because you know, I end up accidentally dunking it sometimes. But yeah, it's been great.
There we go. Yeah, so I'm showing mostly keepers. Uh, actually, probably two thirds of the fish that I caught on this trip were short. Uh, although that <coughs> got skewed at the end because uh, the last half an hour or so I, I had a lot more shorts than keepers. But yeah, still, uh, yeah, one out of three. That's, that's pretty good and certainly plenty of keepers. And this is a three hour trip and the, the total keeper count was 16. bigger ones now. Waited for that hit. Move it off the structure.
So not this fish, but the one before. Um, I had to wait a little bit for it. And I understand that you know waiting a minute for a fish is not necessarily a long time, but on this trip, yeah, it is. Um, you know, if I'm right on the structure, I should be getting hit right away. What's happening is uh, the current is 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 weakening. It's it's approaching uh, it's approaching a change. Um, so my position is shifting a little bit, and I'm going a little bit off the structure. So I, I keep looking over up on, on the, the bluff there to try to, yeah, there, that's what I'm doing. I'm looking over there, I've got a range, and I'm, tr and I'm noticing that I'm slipping. Um, I'm moving a little bit. Um, and you know what? I'm gonna end up waiting on this fish too, and uh, then I'm gonna have to do something about it. Interesting, I had to wait a little longer on that one too. Some of these bigger ones you gotta wait a little longer for a hit. Oh yeah. I love how nothing gets gut hooked with this fishing. Everything is lip hooked. Uh, it's so much different than using a hook and a leader. Okay, note the uh, uh, fish finder is back on again. I had to make a move. Um, I ended up waiting even longer for the next hit and finally, I, and I realized I turned that machine on and I was off the mark. So I've reset, had to reset my anchor. Tide current shifted. I'm putting down, not getting hit. Just sitting right on top of it now, though. This is a nice thing about making a little move, get on a little bit different fish maybe. After the change in current direction, I kept catching a very fast pace, but uh, the size went down, and maybe then every uh, fifth fish or so was a keeper. Um, but hey, you know what? It was a great trip, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like these videos, please subscribe to my channel.